The fight continues between the White House and Texas Governor Greg Abbott over vaccine mandates, putting businesses in the middle. But many are picking the White House's preferred policy. Find out why. Meanwhile, internal documents reveal no good reason for shooting Air Force veteran Ashley Babbitt. We'll discuss the logistics with Dr. Wendy Patrick. And not your traditional political spending. Republicans outraged after finding out the CEO and founder of Facebook spent more than $400 million to push President Joe Biden into office. Did he buy the election and were his actions perfectly legal? Happy Friday to you and welcome to this edition of News On. I'm Miranda Khan. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Protests erupting in Italy as one of the most stringent anti-coronavirus measures in Europe went into effect today. The new so-called Green Pass, as it's called, requires all workers to show a health pass in order to go to work. The outrage over the measure has caused embassies to now issue warnings of possible violence. Meanwhile, back here at home, the U.S. Navy has set up an organization to process now the discharges of sailors who refuse to take the COVID-19 vaccine and don't have a pending or approved exemption request on the books. Recent media reports have claimed more than 200,000 military personnel are yet to be fully vaccinated. The other number refusing for political or other reasons is not yet known. The Food and Drug Administration said uh, it will ask its outside experts to meet late November to scrutinize over Merck's pill to treat COVID-19. The November 30th meeting means that U.S. regulators almost certainly will issue a decision on the drug until December, signaling that agency will conduct a detailed review of the experimental drug. The CEOs of American and Southwest Airlines, both of which are based in Texas, say they are now going to defy... Governor Greg Abbott's order, as you may recall, that bans businesses from imposing those vaccine mandates. Instead, they will comply with the president's mandate that all companies that at least have 100 employees or more require the vaccine or at least submit themselves to weekly testing. Yet another airline facing issues when it comes to this mandate, United Airlines, now set to fire 100 of its employees who refuse now to get the vaccine. Mandates are also causing some issues in states like Illinois. Let's take Chicago, for instance. The chief of police union right there warning that the police force could be at half its strength this weekend as a result of the mandate. Officers must either be vaccinated again or be tested regularly. And six nurses employed by Riverside Healthcare in Illinois have now filed a lawsuit against the hospital over the right to refuse the vaccine. The nurses have religious beliefs they say conflict with getting it. Uh, meanwhile, you have the Biden administration just announcing that it will invest $100 million to boost the healthcare industry by funding state programs aimed at attracting and retaining workers in underserved communities. And workplace COVID-19 vaccination mandates have all largely survived a first wave of legal challenges, right? As we just mentioned, uh, those two airlines based in Texas now designed to defy those orders. But according to a new report, a lot of those challenges not working. This is according to a Bloomberg Law Review. Workers and advocacy groups have filed at least 39 federal cases this year contesting vaccination requirements imposed by employers or governments, with 85 percent of them arriving just after August 1st. Joining us now to talk about the economic impact all of this could have on the United States is CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, creating some uh, problems there, to say the least. I know you've brought this up before in your state of New York. What do you foresee happening? I think going into the end of 2021, it's a big problem if the unemployment numbers rise and more people are out of work. We're already seeing a problem and a slowdown in the economy because not as many people are working. There are almost 11 million jobs available. And for whatever reason, people are not working. Could be COVID because they're scared of COVID. Our people are now going to get fired because of these vaccine mandates. We can't afford to have any more people out of work than is necessary. I do think it's going to impact the market. We saw a, a, an important report that came out today 
The Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report came out this morning at 10 o'clock and it was worse than expected. It says that people are having less and less confidence in the policies of the administration and the policies in reference to the economy. People are worried about the economy. People are worried about what's going to happen in the future. We're seeing this with inflation because initially at the beginning of the year, the administration was talking about the fact that this inflation was transitory. At this point now, I think everyone can agree that it's not transitory, but no one knows when it's going to end or how bad it could get before it actually ends. And that's clearly worrying people in the economic data we saw this morning. But the question I have for you, though, uh, you know, we mentioned the other day uh, this August record, right? A number of people uh, deciding to say, I quit. Uh, we mentioned people not wanting to take the vaccine. They would rather, you know, risk losing their jobs. That takes a lot of guts for a lot of people in an economy that, as you mentioned, is on shaky ground. What does that signal to you? I think it's putting people in a terrible spot. People are having to make a decision whether or not they want to take a drug or put a drug into their body they don't feel comfortable about or don't know enough about. Whether or not it's approved by the FDA or not, the fact is it hasn't been around that long. And remember, this is an emergency an emergency authorization by the FDA. This has not been through the normal test. People want to, I've heard different people comparing it on different channels, doctors and pundits. The reality is this is not the same as the vaccines that we've seen in circulation for the last 25, 30 years. So, there, so I understand that people may not want to take it. And I think it's per, people's personal preference you know, and for, for, for employers to be asking this or for the government to be mandating it, you know, the administration shouldn't be mandating anything. We have something called a legislature. The legislature passes laws. This is not a law. This is a request by the Biden administration. And unfortunately, companies are caving to it. Why? They don't want to make an enemy of the government. They don't want to make an enemy of the administration. You know, look at what's happened to enemies of the administration. Biden and the Democrats are in power until at least 2024. Depending on what happens in the midterms, Biden's in until 2024. And the reality is yeah. if you're the CEO that trades in the stock market, a big company, you don't want to make an enemy of the administration. You've heard uh, different uh, CEOs out there kind of wavering about whether or not they agree with this, but they're tiptoeing through the tulips because they really are afraid to say probably what they think. But it's a bad situation for employees. Do they... Do they get an unemployment or do they take a shot that they're not comfortable with just because Biden said that they should, even though, again, right. the vaccine has not been around that long? We're going to have to leave it there. Melissa Armo, as always, thank you for joining us. When we come back, Dr. Wendy Patrick joins us. We have a plethora of cases to discuss next.